Hey, what's up guys, Ramsey here. In my hand, I've got a bunch of tablets, and I also wanna share with you my favorite picks for Android tablets. One thing to note, I don't really consider the Apple iPad or the iPad mini a cheap tablet. The mini starts at 329, and the normal iPad starts at 499. So they're certainly not cheap tablets per se. Now, if you are going to buy a cheap tablet, and what I mean by that, one under $100, Typically there are Android tablets out there that will be under $100, but there are three things to keep in mind. Number one, many of the cheap tablets have slow processors. So what that means is if you're scrolling or sliding uh, across the screen, tapping a program, asking it to load, it may be slow or sluggish. Uh, and sometimes it's really frustrating because you tap things and you expect it to respond immediately. Number two, with cheap tablets, Keep in mind that a lot of them do not have the full Google Play market. Many of these cheap tablets have very limited markets in which you can download apps. They're very restrictive and you won't be able to get things like Angry Birds or Facebook or actual apps that you want to have. So keep that in mind and very carefully read the box in regards to does it have access to the full Google Play market or some kind of proprietary market they've created themselves. Number three, and this is probably the most frustrating for people who buy a cheap tablet, which is resistive screens. There's a, a technology called resistive screens, which is a different type of technology than most of us are used to with the iPad, which is when you tap something, you just have to barely press the screen and it actually re recognizes um, your finger tap. However, resistive screens are often used in cheap tablets, and what that means is you have to press a lot harder for it to respond, and that can be really frustrating over time when you're using different apps. Um, you can get by, but I can tell you that it is a different experience when you buy a tablet that has a resistive screen. So I have three different tablets that I want to show you guys today. They're all $199. We have the Google Nexus 7, the Pantech Element, and the Amazon Kindle Fire HD. This is actually the 8.9, but I'm recommending the, the normal Kindle Fire HD. These are all $199 uh, in terms of their price points, which I believe is, is the appropriate amount if you want to spend a minimal amount of money, but for a good tablet, $199 is what you're going to need to spend. Before I get started, I just want to show you one quick thing with the Google Nexus 7 here. It's a 7-inch tablet. And the seven inches, I think, is key. Because there are other tablets that are of this size, like the iPad mini and things like that. But as I'm typing here, hi, my name is Ramsey, you'll notice that I can use both my thumbs to type on this. And seven inch tablets allow you to do that. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a tablet and you're thinking about the different sizes to buy. It's not that other tablets don't allow you to type. Um, but to type with your thumbs is a big difference and it's a lot easier to type quickly um, using your thumbs. So the first tablet I want to talk about is the Kindle Fire HD. This is actually the 8.9 model. It's a little more expensive, but I didn't have access to the normal Kindle Fire HD, so I had to use this one. But essentially, uh, these are both the same, this is just a little bit bigger. So the Kindle Fire, what are my thoughts in regards to it? I think this is the best casual tablet, meaning it's super simplified. The version of Android that it's running um, is actually much different than what you see on the Nexus 7. Um, the reason being is that Amazon has designed an interface that is really, really simple for the average user to just pick up and figure out. So the other tablet that I recommend, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, is the Google Nexus 7. This is actually made by a manufacturer called ASUS. And this tablet is what I consider a full-featured tablet, meaning there's no restrictions to downloading apps. Um, the performance in general is much better than I think the Kindle Fire um, is. And it, it, it's just overall better for someone who is savvy and is wanting to do a lot with their tablet. It's $199, you can get it from Google right now. Real quickly, I want to note the Pantech element. You know, in general, this is not exactly in the same ranks um, as the Nexus 7 or the Kindle Fire, but this actually is waterproof. I shot a previous video blog where you could take this tablet and dunk it in water. And right now, if you buy it from AT&T, it's 199 It is something to consider, especially for those of you who have kids and um, don't really want to worry about I guess the electronics that you were giving them um, getting ruined. Uh, you can actually dunk this completely in the water, submerge it, and it'll still work. So the Pantech element is something just quickly to note because it's, it's not a bad device as well. 